I've talked a lot about the super prompt in the past, and I've pretty much lauded it as the best way to use AI. It's a slightly more complicated, but far better way of actually generating results with AI. Whether you're writing nonfiction, fiction, or any number of tasks, the super prompt was kind of the way to do it. But ever since a couple of developments have come across, for instance, Claude released Claude 2.1, which ended up being not really great for the super prompt. And then other tools like Novel Crafter have come out, which uh, have been really great for fiction in particular with that one. So is the super prompt idea completely outdated or is it still a great way to actually write with AI? That's what I'm going to answer in this video. So the way a super prompt worked is basically it just, it was a very long prompt that's divided into sections here like this. So you, it has an opening and a closing tag, much like you would see in a like an HTML markup or something like that. And it just helps the AI read the instructions a little bit better and have an idea of where things start and end. It just organizes things better for the AI. You're kind of speaking its language, right? So here we have like a style section and everything here is in the style. And then here we have the instructions and then here we have keywords, right? This is a sample of my SEO informational article super prompt that I've used for my website. And that's just ba the basics of how it works, right? And all you have to do is plug in some information here. So like for instance, right here, you plug in your topic. Here is the article outline. So you would need to add in, you know, information about what you want your article to be about here. And you put in examples here. And that's what that looks like. For fiction, it's a little different. Fiction looks similar but you have you know your instructions tag here you have your style here you have information about your characters information about your setting an overview of the book and information about like what happens in the chapter and and this is basically you plug in all the information for all of that and then you take this entire thing and you plop it into a model like claude this is claude pro that i have here and boom it spits out chapter or an article or what have you and so let me just answer this question directly. Yes, the super prompt is still relevant. However, there are some things about it that you have to keep in mind. I mentioned Claude 2.1 already, and we have found that for certain types of super prompts, Claude 2.1 is not great. It's not great for doing fiction, for one. It's not great for doing really long pieces of text. But not all super prompts are long pieces of text, and I'll show you an example of one of those later on. Thankfully, if you have Claude Pro, you still have access up here in the top right corner to the older models, particularly Claude 2.0 is the one that you want. So you select that and it opens up a new chat and you can chat with it here. You can also access Claude 2.0 through Open Router or through Poe.com, number of ways you can access it. But here's why I consider the super prompt to still be relevant, and that is it is actually kind of the idea behind every AI tool out there. And I'll show you what I mean. If we go into ChatGPT, I've created a number of ChatGPTs that I've featured in other videos, right? Like the Nerdy Novelist Chapter Summary, right? This is for creating story Bibles. You stick a, sum a summary in here and it spits out, or you stick a chapter in here and it spits out a summary. On the back end, if we actually go and find my GPTs and select and to edit the chapter summary, that's like, I've basically got here the essence of a super prompt, right? It's complex instructions, and you can even use the same tags here if you wanted to. So let's say we wanted to create a super prompt out of this informational, this SEO informational article thing. I could just take this prompt and tweak it just a little bit, stick it into a chat, into a GPT, and then it would have all of the instructions it needed. All it would need would be some input from the user and it would be able to do the same instructions. It's basically the same framework, but just packaged in a different way. Additionally, if we take a look at a program like Pseudorite, it has information about a brain dump, genre, style, synopsis. You can put information about your characters here, right? This is essentially doing the same thing as a super prompt, right? It's gathering all of the little bits and pieces of information that you need. And on the back end where you are, you know, not as involved, it is putting those together into a large prompt that it is able to use. And now it is, that is a little bit of an oversimplification. There is 
a lot going on on the back end of these tools. If you're looking at Sudorite or Novel Crafter, they're all doing a lot of uh, fun things on the back end. I even made a statement once that is incorrect. And I'll go ahead and retract that statement now. I said that Sudorite uses all of these characters in its super prompt. So if you're writing in your, if you're writing a beat up here and you mention a character, it will include that character, but it will not include others, right? So I thought it was including all of them and that you had to swap them out when you weren't using them. And that turns out not to be true. There is some stuff going on on the back end where it is only selecting characters that are relevant to the scene you're currently writing. So that's an example of some of the complicated stuff that's going on on the back end to make sure that you are actually getting the results that you want. But basically you can mimic the same effect by using a super prompt yourself. You might involve a little bit of work, but there is a much higher degree of flexibility. With a tool like Sudorite, you are limited to the backend prompts that they are using. But if you are using your own super prompt like this one, you can tweak it and try different things and experiment and do whatever you want. Now you may have been noticing like, what is this thing that I'm looking at here? This is a, basically I've just got an outline here for a book that I'm working on about the super prompt. Because I think even if you're not going to be using the super prompt verbatim the way I show it to you here, I think understanding the principles behind it that I'm kind of going over with you now is an important thing for every AI author to know. And I think the, the core concept behind it is going to remain fairly important to help you get the most out of the prompts that you use. And I'm going to be creating basically all of these. I've outlined the whole thing. I don't have all of these yet, but I'm going to have example super prompts for a wide variety of different use cases. Oh, I've showed off the fiction super prompt quite a bit on this channel. I did a whole series of live streams where I wrote a book using that super prompt. I did a video about the SEO informational article super prompt, but you can create a super prompt for pretty much anything. And I'll show you a different example that I've never shown off in a YouTube video before. I have this super prompt for nonfiction headlines. Okay. So if you write nonfiction or you have a nonfiction business, this could be something you want for yourself. And so we have instructions here. Given the subject, I'd like you to construct 20 unique headlines using the templates provided. Select templates that are appropriate for the subject matter. Keep them short and to the point, no more than 50 characters long. And then I have the subject here. Now you can put whatever you want in this, but just as an example, I put this as an email headline about creating a super prompt to write headlines effortlessly using AI without having to worry about hiring an expensive copywriter. And then I give it templates and there's a whole bunch of templates here that I found just from various copywriting resources out there. I just took those templates and stuck them into the super prompt under the tag of templates here. And so if I take this super prompt and we'll just say, let's use Claude 2.0 for this one. You could also use ChatGPT. It's good for this sort of thing. Paste in that super prompt. And here it says, here are 20 unique headlines. Headline hack. AI writes 50 plus headlines in seconds. Three headline secrets marketers don't want you to know. Swipe this headline cheat sheet. Write 50 plus headlines in minutes. This is way better material than if you were to just ask AI to write headlines for you. When you're giving it everything in this structured format, it does so much better. And this is just for headlines. And I'm working on creating super prompts for all of these different use cases, but also trying to help you figure out what are ways that you could create your own super prompts for use in AI. In short, super prompts are still very relevant, very helpful if you know how to use them well, and are definitely not a thing of the past. In fact, if anything, they are the thing building the tools that we are using now just on the back end. Now, if you're getting value out of this content, I would like to invite you to check out my new membership, which I just relaunched along with a lot of cool stuff. The most notable cool thing that I added this time is you get access to a fine tuned model, a fine tuned model that allows you to rewrite text in. It's actually trained on my work. So you'll write a little bit in my style, but I consider my style to be very vanilla, very sort of like normal writing, you know, not too styled in any particular direction. And it takes all of the floweriness out of AI writing and makes it sound so much more natural. And that is something I'm giving away for free in my membership. And when you log into my membership, this is what you'll see. You get access to the AI Foundations course. You get a, a whole bunch of freebies, which you can access here. 
You get access to the success path, which is my step-by-step -step process of actually getting you to not only write your first novel or your second or third novel, whatever it is, but also get it published and do some marketing for it and have your email list, everything set up to basically get you started on a career in publishing. And you'll have access to some bonus content here. We're just about to start some, you get access to this members only podcast, which I think is really great. You'll get access to a lot of the content in here, if it makes sense for audio, but also access to any calls that we do inside of the membership, as well as a couple of bonus episodes here and there that'll be just for members here. So if you're interested in getting all of this, plus all of your bonuses, right? Like there's so many bonuses, everything about the fine-tuned models that I've mentioned so far, you get access to both my books and a bunch of other things right here. So definitely if you're interested in this, check it out and I'll see you in the next video.